Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, we will actually review the structure theory of uh, SLN plus 1C and then actually we will uh, define the Chevalier generators which will be very important uh, in the development of representation theory. So, let us uh, recall. So, let us fix some notations. So, let us denote G by SLN plus 1C. So, this is the Lie algebra that we will be interested in. So, we can actually take the diagonal matrices as H. So, this plays the role of the Cartan algebra. So, this is uh, the diagonal matrices from SLN plus 1C. So, it is basically do n plus 1 intersection SLN plus 1C. So, recall do n plus 1 is the set of all diagonal matrices. So, now we have the basis uh, for this H. So, this is uh, spanned by it is denoted by H i where I range from 1 to n. So, where the H i s or the usual standard basis E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1. So, we have uh, this Cartan algebra. So, this we will call it as the Cartan subalgebra of G. So, now uh, with this uh, we can actually uh, define the uh, important subalgebras called n plus and n minus. So, they corresponds to positive and negative roots. So, we will talk about uh, roots in a minute. So, we take this n plus to be the span of all this E i j s where 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n plus 1. So, this n plus corresponds to the upper triangular matrices. So, this corresponds to upper triangular matrices from SLN plus 1C. Similarly, one can define n minus. So, this will corresponds to the lower triangular matrices. So, this is span of E i j where 1 less than or equal to, so sorry, n plus 1 greater than or equal to i greater than j greater than or equal to 1. So, this is corresponds to lower triangular matrices. Okay. So, if as Lie algebras, so if you know what what is soluble Lie algebra, both n plus and n minus they are soluble, indeed they are isomorphic. Okay. So, there is this natural isomorphism which actually takes given A to minus A transpose. So, this defines n plus naturally isomorphic to n minus as Lie algebras. Indeed, they are nilpotent Lie algebras. Okay. So, this actually gives us uh, the triangular decomposition. So, you can write G as n minus direct sum H direct sum n plus. So, this we call it as triangular decomposition. or this is also called Cartan decomposition. So, this decomposition is very crucial uh, for the representation theory. So, now uh, let us make some uh, important observation about uh, the Lie algebra G. Okay. So, I will make this proportion. So, this is indeed a very trivial proportion, but it is important to note it down. So, note that H is abelian subalgebra 
of G and the second statement this n plus as a Li algebra generated by the following elements x1 etcetera xn as a Li algebra where these xis they are given to be the Chevalier generators of this uh, Li algebra n plus okay, for one less null quantity. So, these xis are called actually Chevalier generators. Of course, for this n plus we also have the n minus picture. So, if we take n minus then this will be generated by some y1 etcetera yn as a Lie algebra where these yis are just transpose of this eis ei i plus 1. So, now uh, if we take uh, this particular i for h i from 1 to n. So, now let us look at the subalgebra generated by x and i, x i and y i. So, let us call it S i. So, this is the Lie subalgebra generated by x i and y i. So, which will be naturally the span of x i h i and y i h i and y and this is indeed isomorphic to as a Lie algebra S L 2 C. So, this is three dimensional and simple Lie algebra. So, note that in particularly we have the following commutator relation the bracket x i h i x i will be 2 x i and the bracket x i y i will give you h i and then the bracket h i y i is going to give you minus 2 y. So, this is the Lie brackets that we have it in this uh, three dimensional simple Lie algebra. So, now uh, if we take uh, uh, these x i's and y j's and if we see how they interact it is easy to see x i y j they commute if i is not equal to j. So, indeed all these relations are there for your Lie algebra. So, since g is direct sum of this n plus h and n minus it is clear that so g is as a Lie algebra generated by these x i and y i for i range from 1 to n. So, note that the bracket x i y i takes care of the h i part. Okay. So, so, since the bracket x i and y i is nothing but h i. So, as a Lie algebra g is generated by x i y i for all i range from 1 to n. Okay, let us verify this the only thing uh, that we need to verify is uh, if we take uh, n plus. So, which is by definition it is a span of E i j which is the set of all upper triangular matrices and we claim that that is indeed generated by this x 1 etcetera x n as Lie algebra. So, for this purpose uh, let us prove only the non trivial statements I will leave it uh, to you to check other statements. So, we will prove only two. So, so why 2 is true? So, let us take some basis element. Okay. So, for 1 less than or equal to i less than j coming from this uh, uh, 1 to n plus 1. So, we can just compute what will be the e i j. So, if you do the computation it is easy to see that. So, this is going to be the bracket E i i plus 1 and then E i plus 1 i plus 2 and so on bracket E 
j minus 2 j minus 1 e j minus 1 j. So, one can use induction to prove this. So, basically if we take this right normed lever, so these words are called right normed lever of course, formed in this uh, order, the order in which is taken is E i i plus 1, E i plus 1, i plus 2 and so on E j minus 1 j. So, if you take it in this order, uh, the right norm levered, so then if you take the successive bracket, then you get this E i j. So, for example, let us do this simple calculation. Okay. So, if you take E i i plus 2 for example, so this is nothing but E i i plus 1 and E i plus 1 i plus 2. So, why this is true? So, basically, so the bracket x y is nothing but E i i plus 1 times E i plus 1 i plus 2 minus E i plus 1 i plus 2 times e i i plus 1. Then you can easily see that only this part is going to contribute, this part going to vanish. So, you get this is exactly equal to e i i plus 2. Okay. So, similar to this uh, you can do the calculation and then see if you take the successive uh, brackets this right normally word uh, using this uh, elements E i i plus 1 etcetera E j minus 1 j. So, then you get E i j. So, this proves that uh, indeed E i j lies inside this uh, subalgebra generated by x 1 etcetera etcetera. And since uh, n plus is a Lie subalgebra that is easy to verify. So, in particularly n plus is equal to the Lie subalgebra generated by x 1 etcetera etcetera. Similarly, uh, for y1, etc., y n, uh, you also have this uh, Lie subalgebra generated by them equal to n minus. And uh, uh, for 4, these formulas are easy to verify. Uh, for example, if you take uh, h i to be E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1, then the h i bracket x i, it is going to be E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1 times E i i plus 1 minus E i i plus 1 times E i i minus E i plus 1 i plus 1. Then if you do the calculation, you can see that only uh, these two terms survive. So, that will give you E i i plus 1 and then this product will be 0 and then this product is 0 and only this product will survive that is going to give you minus into minus plus E i i plus 1. So, which gives you twice E i i plus 1 which is twice x i. So, this tells you that the very first formula is true the bracket x i h i x i is nothing but 2 x i. Similar to this you can calculate bracket x h i y i that is minus 2 y i and then the bracket x i y i is exactly h i. So, now I will leave it to you to actually check the formula 5 and formula 6 actually comes for free because uh, this bracket x i y i is nothing but h i and h i spans h. So, now uh, let us actually uh, observe about uh, how actually the carton subalgebra acts on G. Okay. So, the action of the carton, so H acts on G via the adjoint map. So, let us look at its action. So, basically you have the map from uh, add restricted to h. So, basically sending h to add h. So, this map is actually giving you the action of h on g. So, now with respect to this action you can easily see that. So, each element h in h 
acts semi simply or diagonalizably on G. Diagonalizably on G. So, we also use the word semi simple. And we can actually write down uh, since H is being abelian, so we can actually make H to act semi simple, semi simply. So, in particularly we can talk about simultaneous uh, uh, eigen, eigen decomposition, space decomposition. So, in particularly, so we can write G as direct sum of G alpha, alpha coming from H star, where G alpha is the weight space. So, G alpha is nothing but those x in G such that the action of H leaves alpha of H x for all H in H. And note that, uh, so this is uh, just comes for free from the fact that H is being abelian. So, now if you think about it, what root spaces will survive those alpha in H star such that G alpha is non-zero. So, then this is going to be exactly equal to the following set. So, this is just 0 union phi, where phi is epsilon i minus epsilon j, so which is restricted to h, where i and j comes from 1 to n plus 1. So, we have to assume that i not equal to j. Okay. So, let us see that how to think about it. So, what is epsilon i? So, the epsilon i, so these are all the ith diagonal projection. Okay. So, we can define it from uh, do n plus 1 to c. So, if I take a matrix, diagonal matrix, let us say a 1 to a n plus 1, then we can send that to its ith coordinate. So, which is the ith coordinate projection. So, the diagonal matrix a 1 to x at i n plus 1 sent to a. So, this is a linear form on do n plus 1 and it is easy to see that do n plus 1 star actually span by all these epsilon i's. Okay. So, now if we take these elements, uh, we can actually define this restriction to do n plus 1 star to h star. So, note that uh, H is being a subspace of do n plus 1. So, we can talk about this restriction. So, then what it is actually, so we can denote it by bar. If I take lambda, then lambda bar is nothing but lambda restricted to H. Now, we can take this epsilon i and then send it to epsilon i restricted to H. Okay. So, those elements only we are talking about here. Indeed, there is a better way of uh, thinking about uh, elements of H star. So, if you think about it, so there is this standard inner product on do n plus 1 star. Okay. So, do n plus 1 star is nothing but uh, the span of these epsilon i's where i range from 1 to n plus 1. So, this has this standard inner product which is actually given by the bracket uh, epsilon i epsilon j to be the chronicle delta i j. And whenever uh, you have this in a product, so you can easily see that if you take this particular element epsilon 1 etcetera, uh, the sum of this epsilon i is epsilon 1 plus etcetera epsilon n plus 1. So, this is going to act as 0 on H star. So, the restriction of this is going to be 0 on H. So, now if we take uh, uh, this particular element and then take its orthogonal complement. So, take this orthogonal, this can be identified with H, H star. So, can be identified with uh, H star. So, in particularly we will have actually inner product on H star and we can make this uh, H star as uh, 
in a product space. So, we will actually uh, define this new basis for H star after this identification. So, define this alpha i to be epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1 for i range from 1 to n, 1 to n. Okay. So, then it is easy to see that this H star has this alpha i as basis. Okay. And not only that, so if we actually uh, take what will be the inner product between them, so you can easily see that the inner product alpha i alpha j, so which is given using this epsilon i basis, so this which is epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1 inner product with epsilon j epsilon j plus 1. So this is going to be exactly equal to, so it is 2 if i equal to j and it is exactly minus 1 if i equal to, so let us write it as j, j equal to i plus 1 or i minus 1 and 0 otherwise. So, one way to remember this using the Dinkin diagram. So, if we take alpha 1 etcetera alpha n as vertices and you put an edge between alpha 1 and alpha i and alpha j if the inner product being minus 1. Otherwise, you do not put any edge okay, and there is no edge from alpha i to alpha i. So, in particularly you can see that there is an edge between alpha 1 to alpha 2 and alpha 2 to alpha 3 and so on alpha n minus 1 to alpha n. So, only if you take some ith vertex alpha i only the neighboring vertices i plus 1 and i my sorry i minus 1 and i plus 1 they get edges. Okay. All remaining edges will be actually 0. So, in particularly this is just a path isomorphic to path p n. So, this is the path graph on n vertices. So, we have this information basically this inner product encoded in this uh, Dinkin diagram. Anyway, we do not need the much information about Dinkin diagrams. So, now uh, we can actually make S n plus 1 act on this uh, do n plus 1 star by permuting the coordinates. So, SLN, SN plus 1 acts on do n plus 1 star which is the span of this epsilon i. So, by permuting the coordinates, so how it acts more explicitly if you give you some element a 1 epsilon 1 plus etcetera a n plus 1 epsilon n plus 1 and then if you take some sigma from the symmetric group, then it just permutes the coordinates. So, it just gives you a 1 epsilon sigma 1 plus etcetera plus a n plus 1 epsilon sigma n plus 1. Okay. So, this is how uh, you have the action or of S n plus 1 on this do n plus 1 star. So, by permuting the coordinates. And note that and it is an easy exercise. So, each sigma acts as orthogonal transformation. That means, it is actually preserves the inner product. So, in particularly, so we have the induced action on the H star. So, which is identified with this uh, orthogonal complement of this one dimensional space epsilon 1 plus etcetera epsilon n plus 1. So, you have uh, the action. So, there is this induced action. of S n plus 1 on this H star. So, that is because by definition this is those lambda in do n plus 1 star such that 
lambda inner product with this epsilon 1 etc epsilon n plus 1 is 0. So, now if you take sigma in S n plus 1 and then lambda here in this space. So, then you can easily see that lambda comma epsilon 1 plus etc epsilon n plus 1 is being 0. So, now if you apply sigma then you get sigma lambda comma sigma of epsilon 1 plus etc epsilon n plus 1. So, now e all the coordinates of this uh, vector epsilon 1 etc epsilon plus 1 that is being 1. So, this uh, sigma actually fixes this coordinate. Uh, so, so, this implies that this is exactly sigma lambda comma epsilon 1 plus etc epsilon n plus 1. So, this is being 0. So, this implies that sigma lambda is again inside this orthogonal complement. So, this way you get action of S n plus 1 on this H star. So, indeed you have gone modulo all the fixed vectors. So, it is going to be actually uh, faithful action. So, now, uh, so we have uh, this uh, S alpha is. So, these are the reflections okay, defined on on H star. So, how one actually defines this reflection? So, just use the formula SL, S alpha I of lambda for any lambda in H star. So, we define S alpha I lambda to be lambda minus lambda alpha I alpha I. Okay. So, this is going to give us reflection because if I take S alpha i of alpha i. So, that is going to be minus alpha i note that alpha i comma alpha i is nothing but. So, alpha i by definition epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1. So, because of that alpha i comma alpha i is going to be 2. So, this is inner product epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1 comma epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1. So, if you do the calculation you can easily see that this is exactly 2. So, now uh, if you take any lambda which is orthogonal to alpha i. So, then you can easily see that S alpha i of lambda is going to be lambda because this part will become 0. So, this actually tells you that S alpha i actually fixes the line which is spanned by alpha i and then it actually sorry it fixes the hyperplane which is orthogonal to alpha i and then it sends alpha i to mi minus alpha i. So, that means it is a reflection it is a reflection about this alpha i per. Okay. So, let us see that how S alpha i indeed acts on this basis. So, if you do the calculation you can actually easily see that if you apply it on uh, the standard basis of uh, uh, H star. So, you can easily see that S alpha i. So, let us denote it by S i for simplicity. Then S i of this uh, alpha j is going to be alpha j if j is different from i, i plus 1 and i minus 1. So, that is for sure and S i of alpha i we already know this is minus alpha i. So, if you write in terms of the epsilon i basis alpha i is nothing but epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1. So, then this is going to give you minus epsilon i plus epsilon i plus 1. Okay. So, basically this is minus of epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1. Now, if I take S i act it on alpha i plus 1. So, then that is going to give you sorry. 
So, that is exactly going to give you because alpha i plus 1 comma alpha i is going to be minus 1. So, this is going to be alpha i plus 1 plus alpha i which is exactly equal to epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 2. Now, similarly, S i of alpha i minus 1 is going to be epsilon i minus 1 minus epsilon i plus 1. So, from these formulas you can easily see that so, S i indeed simply switches i and i plus 1. So, S i simply switches epsilon i and epsilon i plus 1. Okay. So, that means S i corresponds to the transposition i i plus 1. Okay. So, now if we take this subgroup generated by S i where i range from 1 to n inside your G L of h star, then naturally one can identify this with uh, S n plus 1. Okay. So, this is indeed the isomorphism of uh, these two groups. Okay, so that is because S n plus 1 is indeed uh, generated by uh, transposition i i plus 1 as, uh, as a group. Okay. So, now uh, you can easily see that I will leave it as exercise uh, this phi that we have defined already which is uh, epsilon i minus epsilon j for 1 less than or equal to n plus 1. So, this is indeed exactly equal to this S n plus 1 acting on this alpha i. So, that means for each alpha in phi there exists w in S n plus 1 and alpha i such that alpha equal to w alpha i. Okay. And this phi is invariant under this S n plus 1. Okay. So, conversely, so if you take w alpha i, conversely if you take w alpha i that is going to be in phi for all w and w and i from 1 to n. Okay. So, that is what uh, this statement actually says. Okay. So, using this we can actually define uh, the positive roots and the negative roots and we have the following decomposition of phi. So, phi can be written as phi plus disjoint union minus phi plus where phi plus is given to be those epsilon i minus epsilon j such that 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n plus 1. Okay. So, if you think about it this epsilon i minus epsilon j in terms of uh, these alpha i's which are called simple roots. So, these alpha i's we call them simple roots and this phi will be called set of roots. Okay, and this phi plus will be called positive roots. So, now this epsilon i minus epsilon j is actually indeed given by epsilon i minus epsilon i plus 1 plus epsilon i plus 1 minus epsilon i plus 2 and so on plus epsilon j minus 1 minus epsilon j. So, this indeed corresponds to this uh, leeward that we wrote it. So, this corresponds to E i i plus 1 and this corresponds to E i plus 1 i plus 2 and so on this is uh, E j minus 1 j. So, basically the successively brackets that we have taken is giving you E i j. So, which corresponds to epsilon i minus epsilon j. So, indeed if you write this epsilon i minus epsilon j then you are getting alpha i plus alpha j. So, the coefficients of this 
alpha k's inside this expression they are all non negative so that is why this these roots epsilon i minus epsilon j they are called positive roots so basically what we have proved uh, we proved that uh, uh, this g can be written as direct sum of these uh, root spaces g alpha alpha coming from phi so this can be further broken into direct sum of g alpha alpha coming from phi plus and then direct sum direct sum of g alpha minus alpha again alpha coming from phi plus now if you think about it so this is exactly n plus and this is exactly n minus okay i'll stop here so we will use all this informations uh, in order to develop the representation theory of slm plus 1 so we will continue with the representation theory in the next class thank you